Hey guys, this is Zach from the Drunken Ones, and today I'm going to be doing a playthrough on Elder Scrolls Online of an Imperial Dragonite tank. Uh, it'll be a playthrough, not a walkthrough, so I won't be, you know, I'll be skipping dialogue, I won't be reading through all the dialogue, and uh, I won't really care about any of the story, I'm just going to be, you know, showing you the process of him leveling up, and uh, pretty much what skills and uh, attributes, things like that, will be great for a... Uh, Imperial Dragonite tank. I'm sick of this island, so, Queen. of course, we're starting off in uh, Stress Makai because I decided to do Daggerfall Covenant. And we're going to do Look Captain Colleen's quest really? line at the beginning before we can wall. actually get to Daggerfall. Got you and again. I believe I'm going to go Three for Jakar yeah, first. He's this is who thief, I go for. But he's the best and he's in the grave, so thief. we're going to go there. And uh, Captain Helene, I have some which... gear that is obviously not what you start with. I used another character and gave my other guy gold from the bank so he was able to go buy decent heavy armor and sword and shield so that way I can level that up as quickly as possible the skill line I can level the skill line up as quickly as possible without having to actually um, go and look for a sword and shield or wait for one to drop I can just go ahead and get one now without waiting and you know waiting for a certain amount of gold so that way I have all the gold and everything I need, so my character's ready, and he's level 3. I skipped a tutorial because I've you know, been through it a thousand times. It's pretty basic. So, yeah, we're going into the grave here to do Jakarn's little quest line real quick. And I'm using uh, the whip from the Ardent Flame Tree skill, the spiked armor, and I. That's all I have for now, but I will be getting puncture as soon as I uh, level up my sword and shield ability. Of course, if you're going to be a tank, you need puncture. It's the only uh, physical close range taunt in the game, and it's only a single taunt, so you can't taunt multiple enemies at once. You have to go around and actually use puncture on sep separate enemies to get more than one enemy on you at a time. And it's, it's very viable for a tank. It's something that you definitely need. Because I mean, th there is another, there is another uh, taunt ability. I do not remember the name, but I know it's from the, uh, I believe it's from the Un Undaunted uh, line or the uh, Fighters Guild line. But uh, it's it's a ranged taunt. I, I I don't I don't ever use that. I always use Puncture because I like to be up close and personal. So. Yeah, definitely. The, uh, I'm definitely going stamina, mostly stamina, and I'm going to dump a little bit into health. Um, the first time around ever doing a uh, a tank, I was a Red Guard Templar, and this is before I had the Imperial Edition, so I couldn't get the Imperial class yet. And I, yeah, I kind of messed him up a little bit. I, I did all health, like an all health build, and uh, it's a little ridiculous. I mean, it. it he, he was strong, but he didn't have that the stamina that I wanted because I, on all my heavy armor too, I, all the all the glyphs and all that stuff was also health. So he had tons of health, but not really tons of stamina. So I didn't want to go block a boss or anything like that. The boss would easily drain my stamina, or if I was fighting multiple multiple enemies at a time like mobs, they would easily just drain my stamina. And you know, being being a tank, your stamina going down is just it's it's game over. So I did respect my uh, Templar tank but he he's still not really where I want to be because, I mean Templars place. are great tanks now, but I think I'd make a uh, a Dragonite tank a little better and I figured I'd just go ahead and uh, show you guys about that I, I, I've watched videos you myself first. and I, I think it'll be uh, very very fun I, I, I've, I've played with a, a Dragonite uh, magic Dragonite build though and it was it was not a tank it was pure DPS but it was loads of fun Dragonites are extremely fun to play with and the Imperials get a great uh, I think it's 15% increase in the uh, one hand and shield line so it'll you know, go pretty fast and uh, that's great that's what exactly what I need so I can get more uh, passive skills on it like Fortress, I believe Fortress does 18% uh, uh, blocking stamina cost reduction so you know it doesn't take as much stamina to block an attack which is exactly what you want, obviously. You don't want to uh, running out to run out of stamina. That's a horrible, horrible thing, especially if you're in a dungeon. If you're by yourself, it's it's not too bad, but if you're 
running as a tank in a dungeon, you're trying to lead your team, and it's just it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work out. They're gonna your stamina is gonna run out, and it'll be all Can't bad. Then you die, and then so. someone else will die because obviously you're the most you're supposed to be the most sustainable character. You have the most usually the most health and or stamina, and you know you're heavy. You're you're the one who's gonna be able to take those hits. Unlike you you know if you have a, a sork or you know, Templar healing in the back that they're gonna, they're gonna, they're really squishy, they're gonna get destroyed. So, definitely, uh, definitely stamina, uh, pass, you know, and those passive skills are really great to use. And, so now we have completed his quest just about. We have to talk to him real quick and then we go meet him again. And we'll Here's finish him. And he gives you his, uh, this way. Is it his machete? He gives you a he gives you a sword, which is pretty cool. It uh, gives you a shield bubble. I don't remember how many points. We'll see. I, I look at it when I get it. We'll see in a minute. But it's a great, great sword to use for a low level tank right now. I mean, it'll definitely give you more sustainability uh, without you having to use anything. It, 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 it's just it's automatic. The sword with the sword, so you don't have to use any stamina. You don't have to use any magicka any potions something like that it's, it's an automatic when you hold it so if you just strike an enemy you'll pretty much get that bubble and uh, it, sh it gives you a little animation so you'll see on your character when you get the bubble it's a uh, pretty cool definitely that's why I tried to went I went ahead and did his first other than uh, crafty Larissa so I wanted to do him and get his sword it'll make it a little easier for me to do the other the other two uh, people's quests Here we go. Yeah, I believe we go to the goblin mine first before we. Yeah, we're, go we're going to go to the goblin mine first, and once we finish that up, we can go back to town and meet him in an inn. I believe he's in an inn or a pub, something like that. Is where we meet him, and then we from there. I pretty much uh, I'm going to end the video after that, just so it's nice and clean. You see the beginning, you know, get a couple skills in. I don't even know what I was doing right there. I kind of try to treat this game like Skyrim a little bit, where you uh you know you can climb mountains. In this game, it's a little, it's not as easy. To just like scale mountains and make shortcuts, taking roads most of the time is the better way to go instead of trying to uh, scale a mountain. In Skyrim, it's, I guess it's really 50-50, you can scale a mountain, sometimes you'll get lucky and actually be able to scale all the way up it and get a shortcut, but in, in ESO you really, it's really hard to scale any mountains. It's not big mountains usually either, but uh, Store everything on the upper level. it's still pretty hard to uh, scale over rocks and everything the way that he jumps, so I can just recommend taking the, uh, the rows a lot easier. Yeah, that, that, that lava whip is just pretty badass. It's a great skill. I don't know if I'll keep it because I will not be running a Magicka build. But it's still great to use at the beginning. I just wanted to level up like all three skill branches, which I only have two uh, skills from, you know, I only have two skills from each branch when I don't have a, uh, the third one, I believe it's... Earthen Heart, I, I didn't get Stone Fist, which is the first ability you can get in that tree. I didn't get it because I wanted to wait for Puncture and get Puncture as soon as possible. But definitely usually getting a skill from each of your classes, skill lines, the three, the three skill lines you get from each class, they usually are, they're magic of damage, they're magic of based, but score. it's always good to get those so that way you can level each three, each of them up. So you have first, you know, you can be versatile and also it helps your character level quicker too so that's always good especially because low level it's not a big deal you can use magicka and stamina as you can see which is what I'm doing and I'm not even running you know I'm not running out of either one unless I keep running sprinting before I go to attack and then I probably will run out of stamina but there you go we just got to level four I believe I choose a passive I believe I just uh, off screen, I believe it's off this screen. I'm going to be doing all my leveling off, like leveling up, usually uh, off screen. So all my attributes and skills, and then I probably like the next video, I'll show you what I have done 
what I upgraded, if I change anything, put any different armor or anything like that on. Yeah, I kind of didn't even see the boss there, just ran through the chest and was getting a little too uh, quick so I didn't see it. Yeah, I definitely move my character and the screen around a lot when I'm uh, fighting. It's just something I do. It can be kind of annoying for some people, but it kind of helps me. I know I know it really doesn't do too much in the way of uh, me still getting hit. I still pretty much get hit, but it, I just like to do it. I guess it's just like uh, in my head I feel like I'm actually dodging the attacks, when in reality I'm still, I'm still getting hit most of the time. Over here. Sometimes it can help, but definitely being a tank, you don't want to you you want to you don't want to do that as much when you're He's in a alive, dungeon with just... somebody. I, I I always lie to her about Jakarn, by the way. I never I never sell out Jakarn. But uh, yeah, it, when you're a tank in a dungeon, you definitely do not want to uh, move around like that because when your teammates are attacking, you wanna you wanna taunt the boss. Maybe a couple lads, but mainly you want to worry about the boss and taunt the boss, and then maybe strife around and uh, get him to face you, but get his back to face your teammates. So that way, if he does a swing or something, he doesn't overswing on you and catch any of them and maybe kill him. So that way, you, you know, he you you want them behind him, so that way they're safe. Unless he does like a really big swing where he even catches him on the back swing or something, but that's usually what you want to do. So that way, that's just that, that's small differences between like, like a crappy tank and a good tank. So, and that's that's probably what I, I, my favorite role is. Actually, my favorite role I think would be a healer in this game. I love healing in this one. Being a tank is a little different because you really don't have any AOE taunts, so you can't really taunt like you know all the trash, all the mobs. You can't really taunt taunt all of them. I mean, you can't even go around and. You know, spam puncture if you really wanted to, but which which I do sometimes. I'll just sometimes go you know go through, grab like four or five of them, and then keep going to the next one. Grab three you know three four of them, and if you can take it, it's not a bad idea to do. So that way, they can get them all grouped together, and you can have a mage or you know a templar you know spam a couple AOE attacks, and it really that's a really good way to get them get out of them quick like. You can really like might wipe out, mo wipe out mobs and uh, trash hey, that you. way. Yeah, there you go. Hey, you. There's his uh, yeah, you. weapon. Yeah, Jakarn's machete. Really good for <laughs> someone who wants to be a little more tanky and get more He's health, get a bubble, because it definitely gives you that bubble. Uh, I can't remember how many points it gives you, but it, it's a great weapon to use at the beginning. Especially since at this rate, you, unless you have a really high other tune on your account that you can give, you know, a great level one crafted weapon or level three crafted weapon this will be one you know the best start if you're in this uh if you're in stress Makai starting out well there you go guys